Welcome back to RGR Football. I'm Ryan, and this is me going rogue on your Kansas City Chiefs, and today in particular, uh, rogue on what I think was an outlandish pick for most people's initial reaction when the draft came down, but one that I'm really keyed up about, one that I was excited about pre-draft as well. If you're new to the channel, make sure you click the sub button now and hit that bell notification so you know when something new comes out. If you like this one, leave a thumbs up. It really helps me. And leave your comment below because we're going to be talking today about Legereus Sneed. And Legereus played at La Tech in Conference USA, so there is a lot to be taken from how he was used and against the competition that he was playing. Now we're going to take a look at what Legereus Sneed brings to the table, and that's that he's got good height at six foot and a half, 192 pounds, great arm length at 31 and a half, just about. And it's the athleticism. 4.37 in the 40 was widely reported, but he's also got a good takeoff at 153. And his vertical is competitive and helps him get his hands on the ball at 41 inches. It all leads to him being the number two cornerback in his draft class athletic matrix rankings and the number three in the hawk rate, which is how often he gets his hand on the ball to either take it away or make that pass break up. I've selected... Uh, some all 22 that I was able to get from a number of different teams. Uh, some of the Conference USA, this one was a matchup against Texas, and this was in 2019. And part of the reason that I feel that he really went under the radar for quite a bit is because he was playing out of position in 2019. You can see him lined up here as a safety over the top of what's going to be, I think, some pattern match, but he's going to be playing split here. And this is the first look at how he works, how he functions. That's really the key to it is he is functional despite playing at a deep zone oriented, obviously uh, playing uh, safety here uh, that is a little bit outside of his best skill set. But obviously, I think something that he was comfortable with. They needed safety play. They needed help in his last year uh, with Amik Robertson who's going to be uh, up here at the top of your screen, manning one of the corner positions. They felt like they had a matchup that they could go to against a, a team's top receiver, but they needed help over the top. Their safety play was just a little bit off, uh, and they, they asked him to move, and he did. He took one for the team and got back to that safety, but he is more comfortable and more productive at cornerback. We'll get to some of his corner film here in a couple of minutes, but I want to show you what he plays like. Uh, here he's lined up at the back. And he's, he's a guy, I'm going to put this to full speed here, and we're just going to see him do what he does. And paying attention, he's very good at watching the quarterback, very much the key. And here again, they, they've had a split zone here. He's over the top. You have a corner here in the zone turn. You have 10 diving down inside. That's something we're going to see later. This, by the way, is Duvernay. We're going to see him in a little bit. He is now a Baltimore Raven. And just a basic clean back pedal and gets himself over to where he needs to be. And here's a similar line with him over the top, coming down in a bunch formation. He, instead of taking the deep responsibility, he's actually coming up for this little screen. He's going to play through what is a player that is bigger than him. He's a six foot and a half guy. Honestly, he's very, very close to uh, Charverius Ward's size. They're very, very uh, similar in their size, length, uh, 31 and a half inch arms for Sneed. Uh, six foot and a half, 192 pounds, nearly identical to what you see in Traverius Ward. And he plays through this bigger receiver and actually uh, gets to the force. And that's something that you need to see from him. Now, here's another play with Snead playing deep. And you're going to see him come up in run support. He is the last line of defense here. But because this is uh, three by one over here, he's got responsibility on this side. And we're going to slow this down just a touch and see as the play progresses, the fact that uh, he's reading doing his drop, and sees that that boot scramble. He comes outside, gets inside of that receiver, and makes the play. Now, this is some things that we've seen him do as a safety. Something that he's not necessarily comfortable with, but something that he is able to help perform and do the duties that the team needed. And I think that's pretty key to see. I'm just going to replay these a little bit as well, because this all feeds into what we saw from him as a cornerback, uh, playing with force, coming up, willing against the run, that's a big deal. Now here you can see what Snead brings as a big corner. Again, good size. He can play outside quite a bit. We'll see that in a minute, but he can play nickel as well. In his senior year, as he was playing safety, a lot of times they would drop him down into the nickel spot. And this is him lined up over Devin Duvernay. 
uh, a crafty receiver that plays well underneath and I think is going to make an impact in the NFL for the Baltimore Ravens. I love the way that he plays with some strength, but watch how Snead deals with him. And that is to come in and get physical, do what he does. He's not in a press, but he comes downhill and is able to stick with him, does what he needs to do in order to contain that particular player. Now, while that last play didn't give you a whole lot of feel, here's a different scenario where you have cover four coming at you with two safeties in the middle and the corners are going to drop two. This is Sneed located here over the top of what's going to be a four deep zone with this linebacker actually coming inside. This, again, is Duvernay. And you're going to see how the athleticism plays into, even though he's playing so far off, this is very reminiscent of what he can do as a corner when he's up in man, particularly in press, which we'll see here in a minute. And as we run this forward, watch him eat up the gap and be able to flip his hips right there. Coming down and coming back. That is key to being able to be a guy that can cover when you need him. I'm going to slow this down a little bit so that we can see right here as Duvernay comes off the wall. He's turning, gets his hips one way, turns right around and is able to flip it back. Now, if that ball's on the money, does that actually get completed? It's possible. But it's something that he's in the position to show what he can do. That's going to be important going forward. Now, prior to him wearing number one and playing safe, he wore number 20 and was a guy that could match up, play outside corner. With Jerry's on a smaller receiver here, and it's very interesting when you look at his All-22 film, how teams had to constantly adjust. Mika Robertson has a great reputation, and I think he's going to be a decent player. But Sneed was a guy that they just didn't have a lot of answers for, particularly at the Conference USA level, but even against bigger schools. Sometimes they tried to go small and speedy at him. He still has the speed and the ability to turn his hips, like we saw earlier, in order to stay with those guys. That's key. Sometimes they tried to go big against him and muscle up on him. We're going to see some of that here because Legereus Sneed is comfortable playing physical. It's one of the traits that I like about him best, and I am sure that that's what the Chiefs see in him in being able to play press, man, being able to be a guy that is confident there uh, to match, uh, to carry. And he does a good job in a number of little things as well. Here we're going to see just how plays start. And again, this is a small receiver he's going, about, going against here, but that's not going to be the only one. As we see this, it's technique, it's aggression controlled, knowing that he can get done what he needs to get done. And as this play comes off, you'll see just the kind of punch that he uses using those long arms to get his job done. Actually disrupting there. Now that's a smaller player, obviously messed up his route, and even though he's on the low crosser, Snead is able to get that done. And it's not just against the smaller receivers. Here he is lined up against a much bigger body. But again, you're going to see something very similar in the way that he attacks his job. And that is to disrupt. Now this is an interesting one because this is a press zone look. He's going to disrupt this route and get guys off of their timing. And then he's going to drop into his zone, allowing this safety to maintain his zone as well. As we slow this down just a little bit, we'll see the progression that he's aware of what his responsibilities are. And being assignment sound is going to be key in him moving to the NFL. Makes his jam, disrupts that route. Now he's back into his zone look, aware of his assignment. Now this game is against Hawaii as a bowl game. And... They couldn't get what they wanted when going against Snead with their smaller, speedier receivers because he has the ability to carry with them. So they switched it up, and they tried to go big against him. And they moved this particular receiver on him for a, a number of reps, trying to out-physical him, trying to get uh, the advantage over him, wear him out a little bit. And you'll see what the result is here. It's one of my favorite plays. It just shows you, despite being now he is the guy at the disadvantage physically in terms of length, in terms of size and weight, but this is how he fights through. And it's simple. It's not quitting. It's not just getting the jam and, and letting go. He's going to carry that through. This is the kind of thing that I love to see in a player because he's going to need to do this at the NFL level. It's not just enough to try to get initial jam and disrupt a route. you got to fight through this stuff. And that comes in handy when you're used to playing through, when you're used to being able to battle. It allows you to disguise a few things too. And here we're going to see what they use his skill set for in another way being a chess piece, being somebody who can do multiple jobs. We've seen him earlier in this video play the safety spot, come in and play the nickel as a drop down, but have mixed responsibilities here. Well, not only can he man the outside like we've seen to this point, he can disguise things as well. And now he's given a signal back here about where he's going to be at because he's off to the races, charging, trying to make that leap and time that pass. He doesn't actually get his hands on it, 
But that's a nice play from a guy that isn't asked to rush a whole lot. And this blitz is something that I think you're going to see him be able to do from the outside in the NFL, but specifically from the nickel that I think they're going to put him in at times. And all that culminates in what I think is my favorite play of the All-22 I've been able to get on Snead. And and here is uh, another uh, CUSA opponent Again, trying to go a little bit smaller. This is like a 5'10 receiver that's got pretty good speed. There's another one on this team we'll see in a little bit. But they're trying to utilize that. And so what Snead does is execute his jam and then look to make some profit off of it. Very much reminiscent of a college uh, Marcus Peters that came to the Kansas City Chiefs and had a knack for getting his hand on the ball. I think that's what the Chiefs see in what he's able to do. Now this is, again, an interesting zone concept off of a press this is something you've seen him do and I'm very intrigued to see what he can do here right now he's going to get that press bam knock him off the route and then come back underneath where that pass was intended leaping catch and take it in for pick six you don't see that every day and we're going to slow that down a little bit because he's got to complete two different things get this jam and watch how he knocks this receiver all the way off the route. I mean, to the ground. That's significant. And now he's immediately crossed his hips over and he's trying to get his depth to get to his zone responsibility. Now this pass is, I think, supposed to be a screen to the the underneath running back. And I think it's going to go a little awry on the quarterback. And he's just watching. Right now you can see he is zoned in watching this quarterback. That's something that Snead does all the time. It's going to pay off for him in the league so long as that he can get his fundamentals down and be in position to make plays like this one, where he's just watching, slight overthrow, and he can take it away. Nice grab and a spin. And then it's all athleticism getting to the end zone, something that I expect to see him do in KC. Now, versatility is something that we've heard Steve Spagnuolo talk about. We've heard Coach Madison talk about this. And the Chiefs really like what Snead brings because of that versatility. Playing safety, playing corner, but specifically, I think it's about the techniques. Being able to play man versus zone. We're going to see a couple of plays here that are very similar with very different responsibilities. And it goes to show how he can play. Now, again, this is 2018 film with him at corner wearing 24 here. And what I want you to notice is the way that they are in a bunch with tight end on the other side. So three by one uh, running back in the back. And this bunch is about responsibilities. There's communication going on right here. And you can see that what they're going to end up doing is playing man. And so right now, as they're currently aligned, those are the man responsibilities they're going to take. As we roll forward, see that Snead has this receiver here. As he comes off, cuts in, he stays with him. Now that's important. That technique is not exactly something that's not going to get you flagged in the NFL. But this is about being able to play your responsibilities with this 38 carrying his receiver. And this is Mick Robinson diving underneath as the two outside receivers are basically running routes that allow the inside receiver to duck under. That's Robertson here. He's got to duck under while Sneed is playing his man on the in-cutting route. So that's an interference call in the NFL, but still, it's about playing the man responsibility. And here we say the opposite. The mirror approach later in that same game with uh, tight end over here, three-man bunch here. This is Snead now playing on the left-hand side. He did, did line up a lot as the right-hand outside corner, but uh, when this kind of thing happens, you do shift down. So this is where he is, and again, three defenders, not the same three defenders, but three defenders nonetheless, he's aligned to the outside. So had they played the man coverage they played last time, his responsibility is going to be 10, but that's not what they do here. I'm going to speed this back up so we can see it real time. You'll see that his, while the, play is the same the formation is the same the responsibilities are very different and as he plays off here his man cuts inside and he is digging deep in his back pedal to get to his designated zone and going back we will see that it is an in-round cut from this outside receiver he's getting to a spot he's defending a space in an area while these defenders have different places that they have to defend as we roll it forward here on a little bit slower and we see from the get-go, as the ball is snapped, these receivers are both taking outside releases, whereas his outside receiver is diving inside. Trying to split the difference between these two 
other routes being run that are really in defense of his route. They're clearing the way so that he can cut in between them. Now, you can say that you could try to get this ball delivered quickly, beat this coverage, or let him slip behind what is probably a slower defender, a linebacker, that he could have beaten. But he settles down here. Had he continued to run, turned it up, he'd have had something. In the meantime, what we've seen is the inside receiver has come out and Snead is playing back, trying to get to his spot, being able to be in position to defend. Now, the, the screen goes away, but this is similar action in formation, and the responsibility is what you can do when you can play a player like Snead that can do a little bit of everything. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this. There's a lot to go on, a lot to look at. There is more film out there, but you never know what you're going to find. If you like this one, make sure that you hit that sub button, the bell notification, leave your comment below, and hit a thumbs up if you like this one. I will have more of these during the summer. This is an early look at Snead. If I f find more film that I can dig into, I will definitely let you know. That is something that I enjoy doing, and I think you guys get a kick out of doing as well. So we'll have more for you. Make sure you check out these as they come up on your screen. Thanks for watching this one, and I'll check you next time.